All right, my watch says it's officially the bottom of the hour, so I would like to welcome you to today's 30-minute workout. My name is Jerry Bartles, and I'll be doing most of the heavy lifting today. Joining me are my colleagues, Dana Judge and Jeff Bartles, who will be taking care of questions and that in the background. If um, in today's session, we're going to be reviewing the inquiry tools that are in Civil 3D. If you've joined us for a 30-minute workout before, welcome back. A uh, special welcome to those folks who are viewing this uh, outside of the U.S. where we are broadcasting. We have a uh, special uh, appreciation for those folks who are willing to stay up late at night to uh, attend the session live. <clears throat> if this is your first session with us, I'm sure you'd agree that when taking a Civil 3D training, your time is generally focused on specifically re what's required to do your job. However, when it comes to Civil 3D, there is so much more available in the application. So, and if those tools aren't covered in that uh, traditional training session, then they instead are things that you have to learn over, in some cases, a lifetime of using Civil 3D. That's the purpose of these sessions, is to help fill in those gaps and accelerate that discovery process. So as we go through the presentation today, we have a couple of ground rules. These sessions are only 30 minutes and we start on time and end on time. Also, the examples that we use are typically abstract in nature so that we can be laser focused on how a particular tool works. From there, you can take the next step in how to best apply it to your particular project or situation. The sessions are always recorded and anyone that's registered will receive a copy of that recording. If you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the Q&A pane. Uh, Dana and Jeff will be addressing those as we go. Additionally, if you'd like a follow-up call uh, with any of us regarding what we've covered during our session today, please put that in the Q&A pan panel as well. We always enjoy speaking with other users. Our agenda for today, as mentioned, we're going to be looking at the inquiry tools within Civil 3D. <clears throat> I've got a number that I'm going to go through and uh, demonstrate, and then if I have some time at the end, we'll do some, some bonus content. Uh, we are a big fan of the PowerPoint free zone. So for the most part, everything that we do will be in the application. Uh, the one place that will be a little different today, just want to make a quick announcement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Autodesk University is free this year. And why that's important is because it's going to impact our schedule that we typically do these sessions every two weeks because Autodesk University is three weeks from now and we are hosting a Civil 3D Tips and Tricks session that's an hour in length. What we're going to do is skip uh, the session that we would typically do in two weeks and encourage folks to attend Autodesk University, where you can see our session that goes over tips and tricks and have access to literally, I think from what I saw at last count, was 750 other sessions um, spanning a number of dis different disciplines and industries. Most of those sessions are on demand, so you have the ability you can log in and view them at a time that is convenient for you. If you're interested in, uh, in attending one of those, just go to AU autodesk.com and there'll be a link there to register. You can go to our blog. There's a link there as well. Um, if you're somebody that's never had the opportunity to go to Autodesk University, the fact that it's free this year and giving you access to that content in real time is a, uh, is a huge benefit. So uh, what we want to do is encourage you to take advantage of that and we will resume our 30 minutes uh, workouts again on December 3rd. So with that, let me hop out of this and hop into Civil 3D here. And I'm working in a project that has a number of drawings because the tools span various uh, aspects of a Civil 3D model from points to profiles to sections to corridors. So the, uh, the file or the project that I'm working in is actually something that's in Vault. And I've got a number of different uh, uh, portions of that project and different files that we'll be exploring as we go through. So I'll be hopping in and out of several files as we go. So the first thing from a uh, inquiry tool standpoint, the place that we will find that is if we go to the analyze uh, tab up here at the top in the ribbon, and then come over to the side here, there's a tool here that's called the inquiry tool. We can access it through the ribbon or we can see the command we just type in show inquiry will bring that up for us on the screen. If I open that up, there are a series of, of tools that we can leverage, and these are some fantastic tools. We'll walk through how these work. Um, with these tools, the advantage is I can start to pull information out of my model that would have otherwise required me to have an annotation label or something like that 
to be able to visualize something like a slope and elevation or a grade. All right, to make this a little more convenient, I'm going to take my prospector here and I'm gonna set that up to uh, auto hide. So that will uh, roll up on its own and I'm gonna anchor that to the left and I'm gonna drag my inquiry tool over here to the side so that we can uh, focus on that as we go through. So to start, first tool I wanna look at is points. Fantastic tool in here is to inverse between two points. This is something that I get asked a lot, especially when I'm working with surveying folks, is how do I inverse between two points within, uh, within Civil 3D? And here's a great way that we can do that. Um, I've got a couple of points in here listed already. If I were to uh, back up, it's actually uh, points that extend around a, a piece of property. So just to have some points to work with. We saw that it starts around point number 5,000. So we're gonna go ahead, come back here to point inverse. I'm gonna start with my first number, we'll say 5,000. And I'll come down to the next point number, we'll say I wanna to go to 5,200. And when I type that in and hit enter, I see it automatically computes the, uh, the distance between those points. Uh, I see that distance, that bearing, I see the coordinates of those points, the elevations for both so I can glean a lot of information about, about those two. Now, this dialogue is fantastic because any area that you see a white cell here, like when we put in a point number, we can type uh, a value in there to be able to compute or have that take a, a part in the computation. If we've got other buttons here, I've got an ellipsis that I can click on to actually physically select an object. So in this case, if I wanted to grab a particular point, Let's say I wanted to do uh, 5042. I would select that because I selected that point. It remains tied to the point that I had before. Obviously updates my results. I've got a, a picker button here on the side that if I use that uh, picker button, I can pick something else like an endpoint or you know object snap or just free pick points. And as I as I pick those points, it will automatically compute the bearing and the distance. You know in whichever direction we're, uh, we happen to be working with. And at the same time, we can also start doing things like locking particular values. So for example, I wanted to adjust um, the, uh, the easting. I could take my, my points, the, uh, the northing would remain locked, but as I were to pick, it would give me the bearing and distance along a particular uh, easting axis. Okay, so fantastic tool for doing that as we, Populate information in the tool. Let's go back to 5,000 here. I can get that information out. Um, obviously there's cut and paste. However, it's a little, I don't wanna say unique here, but we've got some other functions in that. If I right click on a particular cell value, it'll say copy that value to the clipboard. So I could copy that to the clipboard. I'm gonna open up a uh, text file here is kind of like my scratch pad. So I'm gonna right click and we'll paste and there's the coordinate that was pulled out from that particular cell. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. We'll come back and if I right click, we can say copy to clipboard. And if we come out and look at the, uh, my scratch pad here and paste that, it basically gives me the values for everything. Those things that are able to compute values, those things that are blank, but it, it basically copies the entire um, display that is uh, represented in the inquiry tool. And then there is a third copy to clipboard. If we were to select the icon up here, uh, bring that information over to the scratch pad and then take and paste, it would only give us those things that have values that are computed. And then finally, as we go through and we do different things within this tool or others, it isn't always guaranteed that that's gonna be displayed in our command line. Um, if I were to pick the button here, it would copy that to the text screen and then that information would be available to us right in the command line where we could come back later and um, copy and paste or review values that we had seen recently. Okay, so just wanted to give you some inner workings of the tool itself uh, because what we've just looked at here can be applied to everything else we're gonna use the tool for. All right, so we've looked at points. Let's uh, take the next step here. We'll look at some things we can do with surfaces. So we'll flip over to, uh, to surface here. We're gonna look at surface elevation and grade at a point. Let me flip to a, another drawing that, that has a surface here. So surface elevation and grade at point. 
surface name, if I click in this cell, it will give me a drop down of the surfaces that are available for me in this file. I'm going to use the proposed road surface. That's the surface that is my top surface elevation. I'll give it a coordinate. I could uh, type a coordinate in, or we could pick something off the screen. If we pick, I'm around station 26 plus 00. zero. If I pick, it's automatically going to give me a uh, grade and uh, slope and uh, an elevation at any point that I take and select. Now, when I pick this, we can see that my grade is, you know, more than 10%. So based on the contours, we can see that it's uh, uh, indicative of a, a fairly steep slope for the roadway. If I was interested in what the cross slope was on the street to make sure that that is not also 10%, I can uh, measure that as well. We can do that through not an individual pick, but we can do surface and elevation and surface elevation and grade between points. We'll do the same surface in this case. We'll say propose road, and I'm gonna grab an object snap here. We'll say from the midpoint, and then we'll say to the uh, intersection for our second point, and we will click down here, and we can see that my cross slope is a 2%, what I would expect. I can see my elevation difference all right, so very easily through the surface, we can start to pull that kind of information. The other thing that's kind of cool about that is I can switch uh, drawings, still have the tool open. Uh, in this particular tool, you, or this particular drawing, you see that it immediately went to the only surface that happens to be in this file. So if there's only one of a particular object, it will automatically pre-populate. But if I wanted to use the same tool grade between two points, I've got an existing ground uh, surface in here. I can see from the contours that um, from, you know, there's an existing culvert that goes from one side of the street to the other. I could use this to uh, pick points to determine the uh, first point elevation on this side to the other. And I can get an idea that the uh, slope of that particular culvert, the existing is about four, maybe four and a quarter percent. Okay, so great tool for doing work with, uh, with surfaces. I can come down and we can look at um, a number of inquiries that we can do around alignments. I can see alignment station and offset at a particular point. So my existing roadway is in this kind of a cream color here. My proposed roadway, the center line is the uh, blue and red down the middle here, and then the edges of pavement alignments are on either side. If I was interested in, in seeing if this was my proposed road location, the uh, distance maybe to the uh, the edge of the house or a uh, particular utility or comment box, whatever the case may be. We can go through and start to determine that. Let's say um, alignment station and offset at point, alignment name. I can click and grab it from the drop down list. We'll say I want to do Fish Pond Road, which is the center line. And my coordinate, we'll say that's going to be the uh, maybe the end at the corner of the uh, the building here. And I can see what the station of that is and I can see what the offset is. So based on laying this in, I can see maybe that meets my setback line, maybe it doesn't. I can see station um, you know, for utilities or otherwise if I'm gonna start lining things up. And once again, as I mentioned before, we can free pick. So as I start just picking points on the screen, you can see an indicator displayed. It will continue to update that. And I could even come in here and start to just type those uh, values in for station to be able to compute that as well. All right, very flexible tool for determining that. We'll come down and look uh, alignment station offset and profile uh, elevation at a point. So similar to what we just looked at, however, this time we will give it the alignment name and then what profile has been pulled or available for that alignment. In this case, there's two. I'll say the proposed center line, proposed coordinate that I'll pick. I can pick something this could be at a you know a driveway or something like that some location will will maybe grab something maybe uh, maybe here if i take and select that gives me the station the offset and what the uh, profile at the center uh, of the the road elevation is at that point okay so we can compute that very quickly we can also come through we can do uh, alignment station off offset and surface elevation so if i Profile gave me what the elevation was at the profile or the center, of the center of the road. If I'd like to maybe get the same thing, but see what the elevation is at the surface. The uh, surface in this particular case, or, I'm sorry, I did the uh, the picker button here. 
This is where I could select it from the list or I could just grab it from the screen. We'll still do fish pond road. We'll grab a surface name. There's only one, so it just pre-populated that with existing ground. I could come back and grab my same point here just at the, uh, the driveway, and I could see what my, my surface elevation is at that point, what my offset is, and then station for that as well. Okay, so great way to come in and start using these tools to interrogate what we have without necessarily having to have labels and annotation to, uh, to factor that or determine that for us. Let's come down, we can say, uh, I wanna know the alignment at uh, two stations and offsets at a particular point. So if I've got alignments that are close together, I'll come down with my corridor model here. Let's come back and look at the intersection. I've got two alignments. I've got the center of Fish Pond Road and the other one is Cool Road. I've got a light pole here. Uh, using this tool, I can quickly determine the stations and offsets off both alignments at the same time. So the first alignment we're gonna use, Fish Pond Road. Second alignment we're gonna use, this is the center line for Cool Road. My uh, coordinate is going to be the insertion point of my light pole here. And when I select that, it gives me the station and offset off the first alignment, station and offset off the second alignment. Okay, so it can be very helpful. The intersections, if I've got a uh, culvert that's uh, constructed off of an alignment that, that's crossing the roadway and I'm looking for you know, station or information or elevation for uh, corners of wing walls or head walls, things like that, the tool can be very helpful for that. When it come down, we'll take a look. We can also use this to compute things in profile views. Let's take this, flip over to another drawing here where I've got some plan and profiles. And I'm in this particular uh, profile view here. We'll say profile view station elevation at point. Um, what I'm gonna do, I don't have a, a utility in here right now. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna create one here just to have something in the profile to work from rather than digging into another one. So we'll grab, this as my other axis. I'm just drawing a quick uh, ellipse here to represent a, a pipe, something that I would wanna determine the elevation from based off the profile view. The way that we'll do this, we've got profile view station and elevation at a point. So if I take and select that, the first thing it's gonna want is to me to determine which profile view. Now here's a perfect example of where the picker is gonna be important because uh, a very good job was not done in articulating what these profile views represented. So I'm gonna use the picker here, select the profile view. It determines that we see that that's uh, number 30. We'll say, okay. The point coordinate that I'm interested in, we'll take and select that. And because I did an ellipse, I can use the uh, quadrant at the bottom of here for my invert. And that gives me the uh, station and elevation of that point. So any utilities or anything like that that may exist in the profile view that you're curious about a particular station elevation, you know, halfway between the pipe or there's uh, making sure you have enough cover, things like that. This tool can assist with that. I can also use this tool to determine um, view elevation uh, grade between points. There were uh, projects that I had worked on in the past where I've got a profile grade that's listed here, but I may have ditches that are also shown in the profile that connect up to how it's gonna drain across the street. I know what this is, 10.5, 10.15, we go back and think about what we looked at before. That's why the road was as steep as it was. But uh, what we may have for the ditch, if there's some requirements regarding how steep the ditch is, or even just determining what that is, I can figure that out from here. So I can say profile view elevation and grade between points, view name. Um, we know now that it's 30, so we'll go ahead and select that. Uh, point number one, let's say the, the point is, is some point up here that represents the ditch. And let's say that drains down to the bottom at the uh, culvert here. Let's go to the quadrant of this guy. It shows us the line on the screen and then it shows us what that uh, uh, distance is between them. It gives us the grade, the slope, um, all of that information. So we can glean not only spot elevations, but we can also pull uh, slopes and, and um, grades and that out of this as well. If we can do that for uh, profile views, we can also do that for the profiles themselves. Uh, this is a fantastic tool for profile station and elevation at a point. 
Uh, if I had profiles in the past, I've got things that are broken out every 50 foot. I know the elevation of the profile, uh, those 50 feet. If there was something in between, I'd have to start either changing the frequency or the display or use Excel or whatever to figure that out. If I had a driveway or a culvert crossing, I want to quickly determine what the elevation is there. I can do that by coming in and selecting the profile that we're using. This is the uh, proposed center line the station that I'd like to use here, I could just type it in. So if I did uh, station 2450 and hit enter, we would see that that matches the 18835 that currently is displayed here. But the benefit is I could come in here and say 2456.23 and it would give me the elevation or I could come back and say, you know, 251645 and it would give me that as well. At the same time, I could continue to come in here and pick on specific points to figure out what that uh, that station, uh, what the elevation of the, the center line is at that particular station. All right, so fantastic tool to compute that. From the profiles, we can also do an elevation difference. So if I want to quickly determine like uh, a cut and fill situation, you know, in this particular example, I've got a fair amount of fill that's happening here, a fair amount of cut. Sometimes with the exaggerated profile, it isn't you know, always intuitive. I guess we could do it from the grid lines, but if I wanted to get a little more specific with that, I could say uh, my profile view name is uh, PV30. The uh, profile will say I wanna match my existing, uh, the, uh, I wanna match that to the proposed center line, and then I can pick my point or give it a station. So if I pick a point, we can select a point in here it automatically draws the line and shows me there's about 12 foot of fill there. If I come and pick a point in this location, there's roughly about um, nine point, uh, well, roughly about nine foot of cut. I can come into here and pick another station and it, uh, it will compute, uh, compute that for us as well. Okay, so fantastic, uh, fantastic tool to go around and start to glean some of, uh, some of that information. From there, if we can do it with profiles, we can also do some of that with sections. So uh, section view offset and elevation at a point. Let's flip over to a cross section drawing here. I've got a cross section that is at station 26 plus 00. zero. So let's do section view offset and elevation at a point. What section are we working with? Um, I'll just select it off the list here since we just read it or I could graphically pick it. The uh, point coordinate that I'm gonna select, let's say that I'm interested in the uh, offset elevation at a particular point, I'll turn on my object snaps and I'm interested in the elevation at the back of curb. So I can see my uh, offsets about 14 and a half, what my elevation is. I can you know, start to verify that against the uh, information that uh, is displayed in the uh, uh, model already for the center line. Maybe I'm interested in where this matches back into existing. There is my uh, elevation and my offset. I could do the same on the other side. In addition to computing an offset and an elevation, we could also determine a grade between points. So how this matches back into existing is pretty steep. If I'd like to have some idea of how steep that is, we'll come down station 26. Point number one, we'll use the end point, uh, end point up here and point number two, We'll use the end point down here. It draws a blue line to show us that. And we can see that that grade is basically uh, 100% one to one, which is pretty uh, pretty hot for a, uh, a slope. On this side, I've also got one to one. I've got a guardrail as well to help protect people from driving off. But maybe I'd like to see, hey, you know, if I matched back into existing a little further out, could I get to a point that maybe didn't require a guardrail? Let's measure the... Uh, uh, point here at the first point. The uh, second point will come down and pick a point that's going to match back into existing. And I can see that that gets me awfully close to three to one, may fall within my design parameters, may not. But uh, very quickly, I can start picking points and sections to be able to determine that. In addition to section views, we can also get information off the sections themselves. Um, if there's a particular like top surface elevation or maybe the datum, We'll say uh, in this particular case, I'm looking for offset and elevation at a point, but which section do I wanna use? These are all my, my section line groups. I don't even wanna try and pick that based on how these have been named. So, so we'll go ahead and grab it graphically off the screen. 
and I'm going to grab the datum here at the bottom. Because there's more than one thing, I can hover over what I want, hold down the shift key, and then use the space bar to cycle through the entities till I can select the one that I need. And in this case, that's the datum. So with that datum, I can come over here now to the side and pick, uh, grab a, a point at the back of curve at the bottom. I get the offset and I get the elevation at the datum. Uh, I can come back maybe uh, on this side as well, maybe at the, uh, the edge of pavement. We only need to do the station. So it's 12 and a half. I could read what it is on the other side by, uh, by typing that in as well. Okay, so we can do that quickly and pull, you know, off a specific uh, datum. We could also do an elevational difference. Once again, if we were doing uh, cut and fill, this is station 26 plus 00. zero. The section name that I'm going to use will do the existing ground. Uh, I'm going to compare that against my um, datum. And then the offset that I want to use, we'll come over here and pick and see at the uh, back of curb. I got my, uh, my blue line to identify that there's roughly uh, uh, 10 foot of cut in that particular location. If we were to come over at the uh, station by the guardrail here, we can see that that's roughly about two and a quarter foot of fill. All right, so very easily we can pick points. If I've got utilities and that shown in here, that may help me make some decisions when I'm doing design as well. The last one I wanna look at is we can also come in, what if I don't have sections? What if I've done corridors, I've designed my corridor, but I've not made the sections yet. Can I start to pull some of that? And I can through the corridor portion of the tool. Let's come over to my corridor drawing here again. In the corridor, let's come out here. We'll grab the uh, corridor road improvements. I'm gonna select that. And then I'm gonna come up to my section editor. And we'll go to, just because we've been looking at it, station 26. Uh, plus zero, zero. So we'll go find that, that same section. So if we were looking at that much the same way that we were before, I can come down in the list. I can see corridor, section, offset, elevation at a point. Because this is already up in my display, it's already computed all of the information that I need. I don't need to select anything other than the point. I can still use object snaps. So I can grab maybe at the uh, flow line and it'll tell me at that particular uh, offset and elevation at that station, what the flow line is. I can see what the uh, elevation is at the um, shoulder or the sidewalk. Let's come down and look. Um, grade between two points, like we did before. Uh, we saw these were one to one, so I could come in from the section. Here is point number one. Here is point number two. All right, we can see that as well. That is still uh, one to one that's being computed. We could do that for our, our sections. And then you come down to the last one here, the section elevation difference at offset. So um, we'll go ahead and grab from the existing ground, maybe to the uh, datum. And then much the same way we did before, I can pick a point. And it won't show us the blue line, um, but it will give us, let's see, my offset. Make sure that my, oh, I got to pick, pick on that to make sure and touch it first. There we go. It won't show the blue line, but it'll still compute for us the same values that we had before. So using the corridor portion of the tool, I can come in and, and start to uh, determine some of those values without physically having sections, and I can make some decisions based off this. Same with the slope and two points. I could pick that in here as well to, uh, to determine that. As a matter of fact, yeah, there's my grade between two points. Point number one is at the corner here. Point number two, if I wanted to see if I could match back in at three to one, I see it's at that 2.9 um, uh, over one. So I'm almost three to one for my slope. Okay. So ran through a lot of tools. Hopefully uh, you could see some value in using some of those tools in your projects and on some of the things that you work with. Didn't have time for the bonus content today. Was going to get into some survey command line language, but we will save that for another session. So what I will do is um, roll back to this and ask if there are any questions that remained outstanding or are we caught up on that? We are caught up. All right. Fantastic. Well, and once again, um, our next session will be December 3rd. I uh, would uh, ask that uh, folks take the opportunity, if they haven't already, to sign up for AU. We have a session there. 
So that'll be uh, three weeks from today. It'll be an hour and 15 minutes because we always run long on an hour, but uh, especially when they have the opportunity to interact with folks at AU. So I uh, hope you can join us there and uh, we look forward to seeing you again live and in person on December 3rd. Thanks for attending. See ya.